Hi, I'm Roger Griffiths. I work in the Advanced Technology Centre in the UK, part of IBM Europe. In this session we're going to look at ProView, which is part of ARXX. ProView is a dynamic debugging system that allows you, without having the source code, to find out quite a lot of information about the data and the functions inside a user process, and also from the ARX kernel itself. Now, ARX has had the trace system for a long time. These are pre-built-in hooks into the kernel and you can print out all sorts of information by using them. And it's designed for production use so that when it's switched off it makes no difference at all to performance. When it's switched on though, it can slow down your machine a bit because of the vast bulk of information it will generate. And then you look at that data offline uh, later on. ProView though is a very different tool. Here we dynamically add these hooks or these pro points into either user code or into the ARX kernel as it's running. This means we don't modify the code, in fact we don't even need the code. Once these probe points are arrived at, we then have a language that we use called view. It's a little bit like C, and we can then take information from where we are in the program and output that. It's designed for production use, and it actually makes very little difference to the uh, performance, if we don't dump everything that is. We use ProView via a script that clearly identifies what we really need to know and we can decide to only output information when we actually hit the error rather than everything. If you read the ProView manual it can get very hard to work out how to actually start the thing. You can for example start it up and interactively type in what would normally go into a script, that seems like very hard work to me. You can start it up and just give it the first parameter which is a script and it will run it or you can redirect the input into ProView. What makes most sense to me is to use the hashbang technique so we can name a script that has to be run under ProView and then we can just run the script. Sometimes though you want to hand the ProView something like for example a process ID and we can do that as a second parameter. Or we can in fact run a piece of code under ProView if you want to uh, use that as your prime debugger. It's just a convention to use the .e as the extension to the ProView script but you don't have to. As with most languages, it's best to learn it by example. But the basic layout is that you have a begin and an end section to your script. If you're familiar with awk, you've already got the idea. We begin with the initialization, and at the end perhaps we want to output some final results, uh, maybe a little report of what happened during the run. In the middle here, we have what's called these probe point specification tuples. And then we have an optional predicate that says uh, when this tuple is meant to fire, then we have some statements that actually capture the data and maybe output some data as we go. There are three different sorts of probe point. The first one is a user function entry probe where we can specify a particular process by its PID and then a particular function and when we enter that function probe view will get control and then we can run their script and capture any data or output anything we want onto the screen. The second one is a system call entry or exit probe where again we can either say for the whole system by putting a star in where the PID is or particular PI process ID we can name a particular uh, process running and then we can say which system call it is and then either we want it when we're entering or exiting that system call. The third one is an interval probe and we can use this for regularly outputting stuff out to the screen. There we have uh, milliseconds so if it's 500 milliseconds every half a second we'll get control and we can print out how our variables are changing or a snapshot in time of what's going on. For our first example we're going to be running on a Power 6 machine running AIX6. Strictly speaking any AIX6 machine will run ProView. The script here is going to be called, uh, it is called sysread so we'll just have a quick look at that now. At the top here we have the hashbang line which says that this script is interpreted by the ProView command and so it will start automatically the ProView command to run the script. Then we have the begin statement and I'm explicitly declaring two variables. Strictly speaking, ProView will uh, automatically um, define variables as you name them, but uh, it's just a good programming habit to explicitly name things as you go. Next we have the first probe point. This is the system call probe point. The star here means any PID, any process ID. So any process using the read system call, entering it, will fire this pro point and we're incrementing two counters in this case, nice and simple. The second pro point is the 
uh, interval counter and it's in milliseconds so a thousand milliseconds that's once every second the clock will fire and we'll enter this uh, probe point and we're just going to print out the number of reads we've accumulated in that time and uh, we'll reset the counter and then finally when we hit control C and stop this probe script we'll actually run the, the end statement here and we'll go off and uh, just print out the total number of reads while we're actually uh, running the script so let's actually just go and uh, do that now I have in the background a little script that once every three seconds is just cost copying a little file so we'll generate some IO and you can see little bursts every three seconds there of what's going on and occasional reads firing anyway for other reasons I'll now hit Control C and finish that script. There we go. We have a, the count of all the reads we did during that run printed at the end by that uh, end statement. For a second example, we're going to look at a slightly more complicated script. It starts off the same, but we've included a line here that describes the parameters to the read system call. We're going to need that here because we're going to actually want to pick up the return value from that system call. We declare a few variables, then we've got the system call read, and then we're looking at the exit point now. And this underscore underscore RV is, picks up the return value. If it's minus one, that means the read system call has failed, we're going to increment bad. And if it's anything else, then it's a good system call, and we're going to increment good. And once a second, we're going to output how many good and bad calls to the read system call we're actually doing. So let's run that now. Again I have a script running in the background that is deliberately generating bad read system calls. It's actually trying to read on an invalid file descriptor so we can see the, the count running up there. In this next example, we're going to look at monitoring a user program with ProView. I've started a little program here called NCPU. This is part of a package of programs uh, I release called NStress. This one just takes up a lot of CPU time. We've told it to use one CPU and snooze 10% of the time. Now, let's pretend we haven't got the source code, but we know that there's a function in that program called Engine, and we know that function is actually here because we can use the nm command to actually go and look through the binary and find out the entry points for particular functions and a t means it's a text so that's a, a function call here. Now I've actually got a probe view script also called engine, I hope that's not confusing I'll actually have a little look at that. So we're going to catch uh, the entry points into the engine function and we're going to use a printf which are supported by probe view and gather as much information as we can about when we actually arrive at the engine function what can we actually find out so we're going to look at the process IDs and the thread IDs and things the program name we're going to look at the uh, stack trace and the function we've actually just arrived at and we're going to look at the whether it's uh, an entry or an exit point and we can actually find out which probe has actually caused us to start running probe view and we call the exit function because once we found out this information we want to stop immediately so let's run this script and we'll take the process ID so here we are we have the process ID and thread ID we can see that this is the uh, running as a root user in kernel mean, is zero means it, it's not actually in the AX kernel the program is actually called uh, this and here's a stack trace we printed out the function that we just arrived at which is engine as we asked for but that was called by the work function which is called by main which is called by underscore underscore start which is part of the C runtime library we've also can find out whether it was an entry or an exit uh, point of that function it's zero as an entry and we can actually name the um, probe function that actually started this running probe view and running the script now let's investigate this program NCPU a little bit further. We know there's a function called engine in here and that it has two parameters which are integers 
there should be random numbers between 1 and 1 million. And we're going to use a script here called random to actually investigate these numbers to check what those input parameters are to this particular function. If we look at this script, at the start here we're declaring the engine function so ProView understands what the parameters are on the stack. Then we're declaring a bunch of variables in here B0 to B4 and BM and then we're going to output a prompt to the user so they don't need to know the details of the script but they're giving the instructions here on how to actually run it. When we get to the engine function, the entry point of it, we are picking up that first argument with the underscore underscore arg1 and putting that into our temporary variable. Then we're incrementing one of the counters depending on that value. So if it's below 0, the b0 is being incremented. If it's between these two values, then b1 is being incremented. If it's between these two numbers, then it's being b2, etc. And if it's over the 1 million value, then we're going to increment this bm uh, variable. And when you hit the control C, we'll go to the end and we'll print out the results. And that should tell us about whether we think this is a real random number or not. So let's run this script. Random, and we need to pick up the process ID. It's telling us to wait for 20 seconds. The whole point of splitting it into those different buckets, those different counters, that if it's a real random number, those buckets should hold roughly the same sort of value in it and uh, it shows that the random number generator is giving us a good spread of numbers. Okay, let's control C that now. And here are the results. So below zero there's none, and then for these four ranges here, uh, the number of times we had the value in between these particular numbers are all about the same, which is good. We've got a good random number generator here. But whoa, look, we had 674,000 times we had over a million. And that is not what we expected. And that is actually a genuine bug in one of my programs. I was not expecting that. And we've found out this particular bug without having access to the source code and with the program running. We didn't even stop the program running to investigate it. This is starting to show you some of the power of ProView as opposed to other techniques. We could have stopped the program and recompiled it with some printf statements and wrote some code in there to actually do the same sort of manipulation and checking of the random numbers. But we did all this without actually stopping the program. Well, I hope that's got you interested in ProView so that you might want to go and have a, a real look at it in further detail. This website on this page here is the extended user guide and I strongly recommend you go there first rather than looking at the menu pages. There's a lot more that you'll find in there. 83 system calls, curl internal variables that we can print out and monitor. We can get data out of the user processes. And we can also use a tool to reduce the output from preview where we can tentatively temporarily store some of the numbers and then later on we can decide are these the set of numbers we actually want to print out. I've also been told that the next version of ProView will have a lot more functions too. So I can see ProView for ARX6 being an increasingly important tool for monitoring and investigating our ARX systems.